Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to apply snow to an image all in Photoshop. Rightio, so we're now in Photoshop and you can see that I've opened up an image of a subject and I've also opened up an image of some snow. Now you can do this with any snow but the important thing is that the snow is on a black background because later in the tutorial we'll be able to instantly isolate this white snow from the black background in a few seconds. Now you can get these from stock imagery sites like Adobe Stock or Envato Elements that is linked in the description or you can jump on Google and do a search for snow black background if you'd like to try out this effect. So the first thing we're going to do is go to select all and you'll see the marching ants appear indicating that the entire canvas is selected and go to edit copy switch back over to your main document with your subject and then go edit and paste and voila we have our snow pasted into our document and we can double click on the layer name and give this a name of course we're going to call this snow and at the moment the snow is a bit small in relation to the subject so what we're going to do is go to edit and free transform and if I zoom out we can scale up from the corner by holding shift and if you hold down alt as well it will scale towards the center now normally this kind of scaling is a little bit of a no-no because you will of course get pixelation and a loss of quality but because this is snow it's pretty scraggly anyway and we're going to be adding a blur effect in a moment so we can kind of get away with this so we'll scale this up so that the snow is kind of a bit more in proportion to the subject and once you're happy with the size of your snow you can press return or double click to set that transformation and this is where the magic comes in we're going to change the blending mode from normal to screen and you can see it removes that black background and blends the snow over the subject you can also use lighten and this tends to just remove a little bit more detail so I think I'll stick with screen now we get some of those smaller speckles of snow in there now this does look pretty good and what we can also do is we can add a layer mask from the bottom of the layers panel select black as our foreground color select the brush tool and then from the drop down select one of Photoshop's soft round pressure opacity brushes that is a mouthful and we can brush away areas where there might be too much snow so if we want to kind of remove just a little bit from around the face area we can use a nice small brush just to brush this away we don't want to remove too much because it will look a bit fake if his face is entirely free of snow and around him is an entire blizzard so we'll just remove some of the snow there from details like the eyes the nose and the mouth now what we can also do is we can use this same snow image to actually add some snow to the subject's jacket and hair. So let's turn this off and we'll right click this layer, duplicate it. And we'll just right click on the layer mask and we'll delete that mask. And we'll turn this one on and of course we can shrink the size of this down so let's just zoom out and go to edit, free transform and again we'll scale this down holding shift and alt to scale towards the center. And as we bring this down, the snow is going to become a lot more tightly packed together. And we can just position this around about here, over his shoulders. And just double click or press return to set that transformation. And then we can then duplicate this layer again. And we'll go to edit, transform and flip horizontal. Or you can go to free transform, the whole purpose of this next bit is just to create some randomness so we might scale this up a little bit and we can even do this again so duplicate that layer and use free transform so what we're doing is we're adding a snow layer on top of a snow layer on top of a snow layer just to create a bit more density around the shoulders as if the snow is actually settling on this dude's shoulders now all these layers at the moment these snow copies over the shoulder are set to screen blending mode at the moment it's a bit messy so we'll merge these together so I've just hold shift and left click on the bottom layer hold shift and then left click on the top layer and go to layer and merge layers now of course when you merge these layers it will set the blending mode back to normal but that's fine we just change that to screen 
and we'll type shoulder snow as the layer. Now, of course, this looks absolutely horrendous around the edges. So let's just add a layer mask. We can hold Alt when we add the layer mask and it will be black and it will hide everything. So now what we do is select white as our foreground color with the brush tool and we can now brush into this black mask. Remember that black hides anything and is invisible and white adds to it and becomes visible. So everywhere that we brush over with white is going to show our snow through. Now when you go around the edges of the shoulders you can use a much smaller brush and you can use the left and right square brackets on your keyboard to quickly and easily adjust the size of the brush. So we're just going to go along this nice and quick. So I'm just decreasing the size of that brush, especially for the edges. And when you're doing retouching like this, using something like a graphics tablet is incredibly helpful. And if you're interested, I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro and it's linked in the description and it's freaking amazing. It makes this kind of work and gives you that control of pen, pre pen pressure, I can't speak. It makes it so much easier when going around these finer details, being able to control the pressure that you apply to the tablet. So I'm just doing this really quickly and hopefully you'll spend a lot longer doing this. Now I'm just using the sort of default feathered brush from Photoshop. You can of course use a variety of brushes. You can even go on Google and download some snow brushes and then brush the mask in with a snow brush for even more realism. But I'm just kind of doing this just really quickly. There we go. Just a few strokes. Maybe just a bit more around the edge. Okay, so we've done one shoulder there. And we have the screen blending mode applied. So we can turn back on our main snow layer. And we have something that looks like this. Now what we can also do is duplicate that original snow layer. And we'll do the same thing again. We'll go to edit, free transform. Hold shift and alt and scale down. And this one is going to be applied to the whole jacket. So just make sure that your snow here covers the jacket and we've scaled it down so again it's going to become a little bit more dense and press return or double click to set that transformation and now what we're going to do is again delete the layer mask by right clicking and deleting or just dragging the layer mask to the trash and then we'll hold alt and add a new layer mask and remember holding alt hides everything on that layer and again we're going to use white and we're just going to brush over the subject's jacket. And we can even do a little bit on his hands and you could do a bit of snow detail around the watch, maybe on the tie. So I'm just doing this nice and quickly. Something like this. And I can turn this on. You can see that we're just adding snow to a few select places just to kind of make it feel a little bit more believable. And with the shoulder snow, we can also drop that opacity a little bit. But something really clever we can do is if we zoom in with everything else switched off, we can right click on our shoulder snow layer and select blending options. And we have the blend if section at the bottom. And if we hold down the Alt key on our keyboard and left click on the left half of this slider here for the underlying layer, with Alt held, it will allow us to separate this and drag this to the right. Now you can see in this case, not a lot happens with that side, but I always like to try both. So we'll try it over here as well. We'll hold down Alt and left click on the right half. And again, with Alt held, it allows us to separate this slider into two and you can see now as we drag this to the right, it's blending the snow into the jacket. And what this allows it to do is not only blend these two images together, but the shadows, highlights, anything from the jacket below will blend through into the snow. So rather than the snow looking as if it is over the jacket, it blends it as if it looks like it's actually resting on the jacket. So that's a great way to blend two different layers together or blend a texture or a pattern or anything 
onto a material below. Now, of course, we can go through and repeat the whole process for the other shoulder, or we can be really, really lazy and just duplicate this layer. Drag it over here and go edit, transform, flip horizontal, position it roughly, and then just add white into our layer mask or black to remove from the layer mask where necessary. And we can quickly add snow to this shoulder as well. Now this image is quite chaotic. It's as if this dude is in like a blizzard, so we don't need to be too fussy around the edges. But I can now turn these layers back on. And in fact, now we've kind of done this adjustment here, blending the snow through into the jacket, we can right click on the layer that has that applied and go copy layer style and we'll select our jacket snow. So we'll just name this layer jacket snow and we can right click on that and it will apply that same blend if option that we selected to this layer as well. And you can see that indicated by the little squares here on the side and you can double click that to instantly get back to your blending options and make any changes. So you can see there, it blends that snow a little bit more seamlessly into the jacket. Then we can switch everything back on and go through, adjust things like opacity as well if you really want to. Depends entirely what you're looking for. And we'll just add one more by duplicating this layer and just drag this up over the subject's hair. So we'll double click to set that transformation select the mask and remove anything that comes outside of the subject's hair and then just paint back in over the hair. So there we go, he's got snowy hair now as well. And we switch on our main snow layer and we can even right click this, go blending options and do the same thing with this. Hold the alt key and separate the right half of this slider, even just a little bit, just to help it blend into the image below. And then we can hold shift, left click on our bottom layer and left click on the top layer as well. Go to layer, group layers, and we can give our group a name, snow effect. And then you can even adjust the opacity of the entire group, even if it's just a case of bringing it down 10%. And there we go, we are done. And there we go, that's how to apply snow to an image in Photoshop. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you want my hands below. Take care and I'll see you next time.